Welcome to the vestry at Ching Methodist Church. This is where the preacher and stewards pray before each service. This is a trial of producing a service for people to join in with at home. The service contains prayers, readings, a talk, intercessory prayers and a final blessing. I hope you find it useful and if it all works then we will hopefully produce services for Holy Week. This is the Bible, the Word of God. During this service it will be proclaimed. You are invited to spend a few moments in silent prayer to prepare for the service. Welcome to Chief Methodist Church for our Palm Sunday worship. Here are our prayers of approach. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. God is close to those who trust in him. Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome you, our Lord and Saviour, our servant and friend, we welcome you to this place where your people have gathered. We welcome you to our worship. We welcome you to our lives. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed art thou, Redeemer King, for you reign sovereign in our hearts. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed art thou, O Saviour of the world, for you have saved us from ourselves, giving yourself for us in love. We greet you that we might learn of you. We learn of you that we might love you, yet our love is lukewarm so quickly, we forget you so easily. We disown you so readily. We are changeable in our devotion to you, bending in the strongest wind, blown off course, capitulating to our culture. Lord, have mercy. We want you to help us without our helping you. We want your words of comfort but not your words of rebuke. Lord, have mercy. We want you to be nice, even if we are not. We seek heaven hereafter, but worldliness now. Christ, have mercy and grant us your peace. Lord, save us from our fickleness. Help us to stay the course to stay with you, to stand with you, and for you, and beside you. Grant us your grace to overcome our sin. Grant us your Holy Spirit to enable us to follow you, Lord Jesus, to have your compassion, your courage, your obedience, that we might be strong enough to forgive others to love our neighbours, to strive for justice, to endure the cross and to conquer all things with love. Help us, Father, to open ourselves to receive your Spirit and to walk with your Son, that even we might be blessed in the name of the Lord, that even we might sing now and forever, Hosanna in the highest, Hear this our prayer, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading is from Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and 19 to 29. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. 
Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The New Testament reading is from Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfil what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Let's spend a few minutes thinking about the Gospel reading. Now three words, well in fact one word and two phrases jumped out at me when I read the Gospel reading. The one word was crowds and the two phrases were this took place to fulfil what had been spoken through the prophet. And who is this? So first, crowds. I think that word jumped out at me because we've been told we cannot have crowds at the moment. I guess the closest we've come to having a crowd was the other night when people stood on their doorsteps clapping for the NHS. Did you hear that? Were you able to join in that appreciation for those working tirelessly in hospitals to fight against the coronavirus? We are, so we keep hearing, in unprecedented times at the moment. Most of our country is stuck at home, apart from our occasional visit to the shops and our daily exercise. Some people, like a number in our church, are not able even to leave their homes at all. Some people are asking, where is God in all of this? Living in the modern world, I think sometimes we forget that plagues and natural disasters are simply part of the way the world is. We've been very fortunate not to have seen a virus like this before in our lifetime. In most of history though, most people haven't lived 
into adulthood. My favourite theologian, Tom Wright, has explained that Church's normal response through history to plagues has been to help those in need. When others fled cities in times of trouble, Christian doctors would stay behind. And in the book of Acts, we see that the Christians in Antioch heard that there was a famine in Jerusalem. What did they do? Did they blame God? No. They raised money for those in need. Some may ask, where is God when there is suffering? My answer to that is to look at John 11, Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus. Where is Jesus when there's suffering? Jesus is right there, crying. Jesus shares our grief. The Spirit groans within us when we groan. Jesus on the cross prayed, My God, why have you abandoned me? We have a Lord who knows what it is like to feel isolated. His work on the cross started a new creation. One day he's coming back to judge the world. That judging means to set things right. The second thing I noticed in the passage was the phrase, this took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. All the way through Matthew's gospel, he tells us that things are happening to fulfill what has been spoken by the prophets. He does this at least 15 times. He starts with Mary's pregnancy, then the exile into Egypt, then a number of other examples, and then we get to today's reading. The king will enter Jerusalem on a donkey. What are we to make of all of Matthew's references to things happening to fulfil what the prophets had said? Well, I think there were two things. Firstly, Matthew wants us to know that what the, the story that he's telling is true. Nowadays, if we want to prove a story we tell is true, we try to produce witnesses, people who had seen what had happened. And the more honourable the witness, the more likely they are to be believed. Matthew's doing the same thing here. As well, in, as, well as telling the first-hand accounts of what Jesus did, Matthew draws on the heroes of the Jewish nation, the prophets, and calls them as witnesses who had foreseen what was going to happen. And the second thing we can draw from this reference to the prophets is that God has a plan. God knows what God is doing. Jesus' life and death was not a mistake or a random happening. It was all part of God's plan. We can take comfort in this strange world where nothing seems to make sense, in that God does have a plan and that it is being worked out. The third phrase that jumped out at me was, who is this? The whole city of Jerusalem asked this of Jesus, and the crowd answered, this is the prophet Jesus of Nazareth. Matthew gives his answer to this question of who is Jesus with the final words of his gospel. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to him, said to them, All authority 
on heaven in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So who is Jesus according to Matthew? He is one to be worshipped. Only God should be worshipped. But Jesus is God with us, Emmanuel. He is one with all authority in heaven and on earth. Only God has all authority. Jesus is God with us, Emmanuel. He is one who has given us a mission to take the good news of God, God repairing the world through Jesus to the whole world and build the church. He is one who is with us always even when we are isolated at home. Jesus is God with us, Emmanuel. The psalm that we heard read talks about going up to the temple and placing palms on the altar. The altar is the place in the temple where the Israelites met with God, the place where God dwelt. In the Gospel reading, we heard about branches being laid before Jesus as he processed into Jerusalem. Jesus is the place where we meet God. Jesus is God, alive with us. Jesus is with us. So let us say with that crowd on that first Palm Sunday, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Amen. And now we have our prayers of intercession. First, a prayer based on some verses from Psalm 31. Be gracious to us, O Lord, for we are in a world of distress. We are full of grief and sorrow. Our eyes cry and our bodies ache with grief. Our lives are spent stuck inside and we feel misery. It feels like our bones are wasting away. It can be lonely at times. But we trust in you, O Lord God. We proclaim that you are our God and Jesus Christ is our Lord. Our times are in your hands. May your spirit lift us up. May your light shine on our faces. Save us from this pandemic in your steadfast love. We pray for all those in key jobs, including shop workers, delivery drivers, teachers, healthcare assistants, nurses and doctors. Keep them safe and fill them with your joy. We pray for our politicians and their scientific advisors. May they have wisdom and insight to make the right decisions. We pray for those home alone. May they find comfort in you. Give us the wisdom to know how to love our neighbours and share your love and peace with them. We now pause 
so you can bring your own prayers to our gracious God. We will now gather our prayers together by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now a final blessing. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort knowing nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this week and forevermore.